I am James Sani. I have a PhD in anatomy and neurobiology from the University of Kentucky. I'm going to share with you a video of me lecturing on the cranial nerves. I find that students have a lot of difficulty organizing the information for the cranial nerves, let alone studying for it. So uh, I created this uh, uh, kind of pro tips video on uh, best ways to organize that information and how to study. So I'll go ahead and switch over to that video. Understanding the cranial nerves is difficult, but there's an easy way to simplify the information so that you can study it uh, more easily and to understand the clinical aspects to help you with differential diagnosis in the future. And that way is to focus on the functional modalities or components of the individual cranial nerves we talked about. So now you know that there are uh, somatic and visceral components that go to the different portions of the body. There are afferents and efferents, or sensory and motor, that go to the different portions of the body. So focusing on those, let's take a look at the GSA components, just to make this example easier for me. But you can do this with all of the components so you can memorize them more easily and then apply that information later. So first, let's draw out the brain stem. We have the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. Now let's do these GSAs. So we have to think about which cranial nerves have GSAs. Of course, the easiest one is trigeminal. It does sensation to all the different portions of the face. But there are also other cranial nerves with GSA components. These are facial, or cranial nerve 7, as well as glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve 9, and vagus, cranial nerve 10. What do these look like coming out of the brainstem? <clears throat> Trigeminal nerve comes out at about the, uh, the uh, rostral uh, pontine portion, and it has its characteristic ganglia with three different branches coming off of that ganglion. We have the ophthalmic branch, which travels through the superior orbital fissure. We have the maxillary, which travels through the foramen rotundum. And the mandibular portion travels down through foramen ovale, ovale like a sewer cap uh, in the ground. <clears throat> rotundum like a tunnel you travel through. Then at the pontomedullary junction, we have cranial nerve 7, facial, which enters the, <clears throat> the internal auditory meatus to uh, travel into the facial canal, which travels down and opens up into the stylomastoid foramen. Cranial nerves nine and 10 are very close to facial and they travel together. They have a superior and an inferior ganglion. Both of them do. And they travel through the jugular foramen. <clears throat> Now, we have to change markers, get a blue marker, because blue means sensory. And so where are the cell bodies of origin for these sensory components? Remember, sensory, the nuclear bodies, the cell bodies, are located in a ganglion. So we'll put these cell bodies here in the trigeminal ganglion. Now there are thousands of them in there and thousands of nerve fibers in these axons. Uh, but we're only going to depict three of them. Of course, the central processes travel centrally to synapse on one of the trigeminal sensory nuclei. There are three of those. There's the mesencephalic, the pontine, and the spinal. And depending upon the information that's received, those will go to different portions. Pain and temperature go to the pontine. Fine touch, two-point discrimination go to the, uh, the spinal nucleus. So we're going to show these traveling into those, centrally into those nuclei, and synapsing on those nuclei. Now peripherally, these travel out through their given uh, foramen to travel to the different parts of the body to form those dermatomal patterns. Now of course, uh, each one synapses in a different region of the face. So here we have a forehead, with a very big brow, a nose, and a mouth. So we have the uh, ophthalmic 
It's going to supply the forehead. There's the eye. We have the maxillary portion being supplied by the maxillary division and the mandibular division going to the jaw. Now we have facial to do. Facial has its geniculate ganglion in the facial canal. So these sensory neurons are located there in that geniculate ganglion. Its central process travels through the internal auditory meatus and they synapse on the spinal trigeminal nucleus. These travel out and they supply the auricle, the external portion of the ear. They also travel down into uh, the external auditory meatus to the uh, external portion of the tympanic membrane. Now the GSAs in uh, glossopharyngeal are primarily in the superior ganglion, but there are also some in the inferior ganglion, depending on the function. And these travel and synapse on the uh, spinal nucleus, just like all the others. They travel through the jugular foramen, and they are going to uh, synapse, and uh, their dermatome is actually internal on the pharynx. The pharynx, the internal auditory, uh, uh, the, the auditory tube, as well as the internal portion of the tympanic membrane. So here is the pharynx and larynx, with the, or the, just the pharynx with its auditory tube going to the tympanic membrane, and they're synapsing there. Um, and then, of course, that opens up to the ear on the exterior. Now, the uh, spinal, uh, the vagus nerve, again, all of these are going to the sensory trigeminal nuclei. This uh, vagus nerve travels out and it also helps to innervate uh, these internal portions of the pharynx and larynx. So when you're studying, the process is to not just do this, but to name all of these nerves, all of the processes to completely fill this out. Then once you've done that, you can open up your textbook and verify the information. And that's how you learn what you don't know. So you can focus on that more later. Thank you.